Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Histories. No longer mysteries. Mysteries, histories, histories. Today we're doing a very special space episode based on quite a few requests I have. So I uh, use a variety of different techniques to get new information on mysteries from history using everything from remote viewing to astral projection to several other methods. So here we go, starting with number one. Number one is the faked moon landing. Was the moon landing or any of them faked? And the answer came back resoundingly, no. Sorry, conspiracy friends. There's a famous audio recording of a Russian female astronaut. And it's, she's saying things like, it's burning up, I'm getting hot, it's getting really hot. And this was right around the time during the Russian and US space race, where they were about to send people to orbit the Earth. And it looks like she might have been the first one to do it before her tragic death. So yes, it is real. And it did happen, and still has not been acknowledged by Russia. The Black Knight satellite photo, the very famous one of this weirdly shaped, faceted thing. Is it real satellite? The answer? No. Sorry, gang. It's just a insulation blanket. That was one of the long-standing theories, and yes, it definitely is the insulation blanket. <clears throat> Dark matter, what is it? Mystery solved. It's a new particle. Not a brand new particle, it's a known particle, but um, it is a particle. It is not one of the many other uh, possibilities. Um, I don't think it's a WIMP, which is a weakly interacting massive particle. I think it's uh, more like a type of neutrino or something like that. Um, but it has a little itsy bitsy bit of mass, but enough of them create dark matter, 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 matter. Plus, there's a lot of unaccounted for matter in the universe. There's miscalculations as to the amount of uh, matter in the universe. Um, and, of course, there's black holes and a lot more than people think. But uh, it really is this new particle, 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 particle. And there's actually more than one. So that's kind of interesting as well, too. We'll get back to that. Uh, next, uh, um, um, mm, 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 mm. oh, why is there more matter than antimatter? Well, this one's kind of neat. There actually isn't. We have a parallel universe that has a little bit more antimatter than matter, and thus became an antiverse. It is our yin to our yang. It is our sister or brother or something. So um, that is why everything is still in balance. Dark energy, 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 energy. Well, we kind of know it is the growing, the expansion of space-time. And um, it is a byproduct of the quote-unquote Big Bang. But even more so, all of space is growing in all places. And it's going to tie into something going on here with black holes. But essentially, our universe is still being fed energy. And you'll see from where in just a few more numbers. Now, inside black holes, what happens once you pass the event horizon? Something like this is your traditional black hole. And then um, right around here, you will have an event horizon where we really don't know what's past there. But the mass that is there is still influencing our universe. So it isn't gone. It hasn't disappeared like many people believe. It is still affecting our universe, as you can still see by the black hole existing. Where is it? What's going on inside there? There is essentially like a big pocket, a big drop. And it's essentially a universe has opened up on the other side and is being fed energy from the black hole still, and it continues to grow. 
So that brings us back a little bit to dark energy. So, after black holes, we had the Great Attractor. There's something called the Great Attractor. Um, we are in something called the Lana Kea Supercluster. Um, and this thing is moving, the Lana Kea Supercluster is moving, and a lot of things in the universe are moving towards this area called the Great Attractor. And what is it? Why is it? Is it another universe bumping up against ours? No, it's not. Another dimension? Nope. It is actually another larger supercluster. We kind of don't understand the perspective on it yet, but that is what's going on. There is another giant mega supercluster that is attracting these other groups. Entanglement. This one's kind of interesting. If you've ever looked at the logo of Alien Protocols, it looks like this. And I'm going to show a little demonstration. Let's see, right here, we have a particle in a lab, and scientist makes it resonate with another particle. They kind of get into a little symbiosis relationship, and you separate one over great distance, the other one over great distance, and so they're now very far away from each other, faster than light can travel. Somehow the information goes from here to there. Once you observe one of these and a decision is made, so if it's a negative spin, it'll be a positive spin over here, instantly. So how does it do it? How does it travel and communicate faster than light? Well, technically, once it's observed, the information travels backwards in time, essentially, to this moment when they were together, and this particle now has the information, and over here, instantly, now knows. And in our world, in the now, on this timeline here, we can't notice anything. And so it looks like it's absolutely instant, but it's not. The information is traveling backwards in time and then forwards in time. Is there life in the universe? <sighs> of course there is. There is tons of life in the universe. In fact, in our solar system, there is a lot of life still. On Mars, there's a tiny bit of life. Venus, of course, there's on Earth, Enceladus, Europa, Titan, Ganymede, just to name a few. Now, if you look at Enceladus, there are many famous um, cool pictures now of Enceladus kind of looking like this, and out of one part of it, there's this incredible spray of water. It's an ice world with, underneath the ice is all water. And so from these gravitational flexings of Jupiter over here, um, the flexing of this planet with ice on it causes geophysical heat and these incredible sprays that come out the top. You can imagine if there's a giant sea in here that has bacto bacterial life, it could be sprayed out into the universe. So life is sprayed everywhere. It's in places we don't even think like between planets. Tiny microbial life sometimes, of course, it has died, and other times, being in the void of space, it can still live. So, that's the last one. But we've got a bonus, as usual. What is the Fermi wall, the Fermi paradox? How come we don't see other aliens? Well, there's several reasons. One is the amount of time that we've been looking and the amount of early civilization broadcasts can only travel a certain distance, technically, and they become more difficult to hear over distances, and we don't take that into account as much as we would probably most logically should. And a dramatic number, nearing 75% of all intelligent civilizations destroy themselves, and that's why there's a Fermi wall. So during that rare communication period in a civilization's life, its broadcasts at this lower technology level do not get very far. And then they decide to clean it up for obvious reasons. So that's it, gang. What did you think of this week's Histories No Longer Mysteries? Would love to hear your thoughts.